afternoon to you guys depending on where you're watching me from today i'm gonna do my book review for you guys i'm gonna review my three books see them style and concern by rita roland volume one style and concept by rita roland volume two and style and concept by rita roland volume three i'm gonna review these three review these three books with you so i'm gonna start with the first one <laughs> yeah who is there if you are there just uh put the thumbs up for us that we know that you are live watching this video with me okay if today is your first day to watch my video i'm rita roland i'm a belgium based fashion blogger a youtuber <laughs> and as we say a content creator I have written three blog books. Before I started this YouTube channel, I already wrote three blog books, all about fashion and lifestyle. So I decided to start a YouTube channel where I'm going to be showing you guys the outfit of the day, taking you guys around with me when I'm going for a walk, vlogging for you guys, just bring you guys into my life and give you a view of what it is like <laughs> okay so i'm so happy today that i just decided i decided to take this time out to do this video for you guys it's gonna be one hour video i'm gonna do it for you guys show you guys talk about everything most of the things in this book i'm gonna talk about it with you guys we're gonna see how far we can go because uh it's three volumes it's a lot so we're going to talk about different the topics the inspiration how i got the inspiration to about the outfit about the topic and just how it all started yeah because it all started from me being a blogger i this i started blogging from blogging i started modeling so blogging gave birth to modeling <laughs> and modeling gave birth to youtube <laughs> so it's just a by step i went from one step to the other so now we are here and i'm going to talk about style and concept by rita roland this is the first this is the cover of the first book and this was my very first picture this picture was my very first professional picture i never had any any uh, like education about modeling or anything no there was nothing i just went to a studio and i decided to have my pictures professionally taken and this was the first picture that i did but when i heard the, sh the shoots they're like oh my god you look so good it's like you are a pro already <laughs> i'm like really this is the first time i'm in a studio making a professional picture i always did um use my camera then to take pictures on the street to take like family pictures you know i even thought that i didn't even know how to pose before the modeling thing i thought i didn't know how to pose i thought i was not uh, photogenic you know i just did not understand that there was a hidden talent behind it that i have not exploited. so i started modeling and i started my blog from blogging i started modeling and this was the first picture you see it's so beautiful So when I started my blog, I named my blog Style and Concepts by Rita Roland. That was just uh, my blog name. So when I started uh, writing my book, I just titled it Style and Concept by Rita Roland. I'm like, this is gonna be a long one. I'm gonna be this for it, gonna be in this for a very long time. So I decided to do volume one i'm like let's say style and concept by rita roland volume one i will make volume two i will make up to 10 volume that was the initial idea was that i'm going to make 10 volumes but now i'm already in volume four in four years and i said every year i'm gonna be making a book i'm gonna write one book in one year and in 10 years i'm gonna make 10 volumes of my book and that was the goal and i'm still on track 
I am still on track. <laughs> so that is how it all started. And I decided to make the book and I'm like, how is the book going to look like? I'm like, I like it to be, the book is going to be a coffee table book. It's going to be printed on a glossy paper and it's going to be a very high quality. I wanted the quality to be high. The quality that I use in making the book to be high. So that now led me to uh, invest more because when you ask them to print the book and you really go for high quality, the cost of printing, the cost of publication becomes high. So it was high to print. But I said, I don't mind. Oh, I want to bring out good quality. So that's how it started. So I have the table of contents here. These are all the table. This is the table of contents. These are the topics in the book. And then we have here. This is also the topic, uh, the table of contents. And here is a little introduction of myself. So I can read for you guys my theme because then i was working i, I work with a team i'm not alone with a group of people <laughs> yeah to put this together is not easy i can do everything i cannot do everything myself so i have to work with a group of people my team of experts consists of three people with a vision of perfection professionalism perfection and professionalism that is our goal our goal is to make it as perfect as possible and we are disciplined so if i say this is what i want this is what i want to do i go towards it i try to be disciplined to pursue to pursue my dream because if you have a dream if you have a vision you have something you want to do if you are not um, if you are not disciplined about it you not professional about it it's not going to work if you just like mm, i go do it whenever i have time it's never going to be it's never going to work so that is what they my team they know if we have an idea we want to make it happen we make it happen we do whatever it takes to make it happen if we have to shoot in the snow we make we shoot in the snow we are shooting. we're going to shoot when it's freezing we shoot when it's freezing okay because i have done bikini shoots on a yacht when it was minus four degrees okay that is what modeling is all about and with a smile on my face and you never if i have if i don't say that oh my god it was a freezing day you would not believe it you would not even believe it from the pictures the pictures were so beautiful it was so perfect it was like wow but it was very good i had to have have a cold tea a, a warm tea after the shoot because it was really frozen so my team of experts consists of three people with a vision of for perfection and professionalism. Our team is to meet our clients' needs at all time. It is a team where innovation and creativity is the ultimate goal. Okay, so I always want to do different. My team also we always want to do something different. We don't want to stay in one place in one thing and just be doing the same thing because it becomes boring. We want to do different things different ideas so the so when i'm making the book one thing i always have to have in mind is it has to be interesting when you take one page and you flip to the next page it's like oh my god it's totally different that is not boring why because the book is a lot i have here i have here how many pages let me see i have 154 pages each book contains 150 to 154 pages in every book. So you see, that is the reason why I have to make it as interesting as possible. It has to be interesting. So making the book is not easy. It takes me a lot of time. I have to really work on it, really think, what am I gonna say? What am I gonna do? what have i not done before <laughs> what is new what is trendy what do i like what do i what is it that i don't like i really have to go far to search have to do a lot to search to make this book happen so and then i talked about myself i introduced myself here in the book so that the when you pick the book, you don't know me, you, you download it on the internet or you ask for the hard copy, you get it. You don't know me, but when you read the introduction, when, I, when you read it, you're going to know a little bit about me, 
who is this lady? Okay. So being a, a Belgian, a Nigerian born, living in Belgium for the past, then it was 12 years, but now it's now 15 years. I am a way no international model and a fashion blogger. My blog is all about extravagant fashion that stands out, living room for creative ideas and DIY, do it yourself. It is all about standing out, walking into a room and captivating everybody's tears and exclamation of, wow, who is that woman? That is what my YouTube channel is all about. That is what my blog is all about. That is what style and concept by Rita Roland is all about. You walking into a room and everybody's tearing and saying, wow, who is that lady? She is so gorgeous. That exclamation, that wow factor, I need it. So in my book, you will see the wow factor. You're going to get the extra, you know, because we want it to be extra it's all here in this book and in the other volumes when a woman dressed feminine she is not taken seriously or considered as health aid L yeah because when i came to belgium i had this these experiences so people when you dress feminine they look at you like wow who is this why is she so feminine I'm like, I'm a lady, I'm a woman. A woman is supposed to be feminine. Femininity doesn't mean I'm against men or I'm weak. No, I'm just a, a woman and a woman has to be feminine and a man is a man and he has to be masculine. So there is no fight of power between a man and a woman in my world, in the world and in the woman that I want to inspire. She doesn't have a fight of power. She knows she is powerful on her own and she knows that a woman and a man they are supposed to work together and complement each other there is no fight of power you know a woman has a duty a man has had his duty so we put the two things put these two people together we have a beautiful place we have a beautiful world okay we need each other I am a woman whose passion for fashion knows no limit. A passion that has turned me into a fearless and unapologetic lover of fashion. Yeah, that was what I experienced a lot when I came and I'm so fashionable and people were like, oh, it's because you don't have a child. Dang, because then I came and I, and I was just a little girl. I came to Belgium like 18 years ago. You don't have a child. Wait, if you are a mother, you will no longer be fashionable. If you are there, you will no longer... F I'm like, sorry. I want to be a mother, I want to be fashionable, I want to have a career and I still want to be fashionable, okay? And I will do this. And I have proven myself that it's possible for a woman to be fashionable, to be career driven and be fashionable and also have a family, have children, you know, we can have it all. In this world we live in now, we can have it all. You can be an independent woman who has a lot going on with her and also have a husband and have a family it's possible all right there is no choosing it's possible to have it all as a woman i feel you don't have to dress in oversized men's suit to be taken seriously this is why my blog celebrates the art of being feminine and serve as an inspiration for women to dress sexy and feel gorgeous without fear to be feminine is not to work against men, but to work in partnership with them. This is what my book is all about. Being feminine, being gorgeous, being beautiful, being kind. Because the beauty that we talk about in my books is the beauty from the inside out. Yeah? It's a woman who is beautiful from the inside and she projects this beauty from, for the outside world to see. When she wears beautiful clothes, she smiles, she's friendly, she's approachable, you know? She is not a woman who is snobbish. That is not a woman that style and concept want to inspire. Style and concepts want to inspire a woman who is beautiful from the inside out. So my videos here on YouTube is to inspire women to be beautiful from the inside out you know that is what these videos here are meant to do to inspire you to be who you are to be your authentic self okay there is no compromise 
You are hearing this word once and you have to leave it. And you have to leave your truths. Because if you don't leave your truths, there is, there is no need of your existence. Why should you leave if you don't leave your truths? There is no need. When you are here, you are alive, you are here, you show up as the person that you are supposed to be. You live in your own truths because that is the only way you can have happiness. And what is life without happiness? That is not what we want. We want a life with happiness because when you are 80 years or when you make it to 90 years and now you are old, the things that you used to do, you can no longer do it anymore. And you have to reflect to your life. What would you say? to your old self. If I knew, I would have showed up. I would have done the things that I love to do. And that is why my book tells you to show up in your life, to do the things that you love to do, not to compromise, not to imitate somebody else, but to be your authentic self because you only have one life and you have to live it to the fullest. Show up, live your life and forget about what other people are saying or what the society wants you to be or try to make you, try to, to shape you to be. Be your authentic self. Do what makes you happy. Like in my life, I do what makes me happy. I show up. If I wake up in the morning, I want to go somewhere, I go. Because you never know. Maybe that day is the last day you don't know. And I don't procrastinate. When I want to do something, I try as much as possible to do it, okay? I try to, every day I wake up, I always, my most important thing in life is happiness. I don't compromise happiness. Because every minute counts, every second counts. Any time, any minute you waste, sad, crying, depressed, it's wasted. Because every second is precious. The most important thing in life is health and time. We don't have time. We are here in this life, we don't have time. So show up, live your life, do the things that makes you happy. That is what my videos are all about. Celebrating life, celebrating women, celebrating happiness. That is what I'm here to tell you, to show you guys. <laughs> so that is just an introduction of the book, Style and Concept by Rita Roland, volume one. So you have to be yourself. About the blog book, Style and Concept by Rita Roland. So now I want to talk about a little fashion with you guys because the, what I was talking about just now was all about inspiration. Now I want to talk about fashion with you guys and tell you guys what I like, all right? This blog book is an insight about my fashion style. I want to share my innovative ideas about fashion with my friends, my fans, my family, and everybody around me. It is all about that woman who walks into a room and brights up the whole place. She is sexy, sensual, elegant, glamorous, above all, she is bold and beautiful. She is that woman whose beauty comes from within. As you will discover in this journey, she is a lover of the color red and white. That is why red and white are the most used outfit. In this book, the first book, I came out and I wanted to show you guys, okay, what I like most, the color that I like most. So I used white and red. What do we know about lovers of red? Lovers of red are extroverts, optimistic, courageous, and confident. They are action-oriented people with a strong survivor instinct and are very competitive-minded and love to win. They gain the respect of others easily. They are passive, passionate about life and not afraid to pursue their dreams and goals. Patience is not one of their <laughs> strongest points. They can flare up instantaneously but calm down quickly. They experience life through the five senses. Lovers of white, on the other hand, are people who are meticulous about their appearance. They are innocent, or at least they feel so. 
Lovers of white have a clear view of how they want to live. They have high moral standard and expect the best from themselves and others. Due to their positive nature, they love to surround themselves with like-minded people who are uplifting and motivating. These facts are based on color psychology. So I went, I had to Google color psychologists. I know the color that I love most. I know I like to wear white, I like to wear red. So I Googled color psychology and I made a summary of uh, what the color, people who wear white or red, yeah? The psychological facts about these colors, so I brought them to you. You will also discover in style, in style and concept by Rita Roland Volume 1 that it's okay to be different. All that matter is you loving who you are and be happy with yourself and your fashion style. We are both reminded that standing out is not a crime but a plus point. It is also noted that the best outfit you can ever wear is a smile. In conclusion, this blog book is about a daring fashion style. The ultimate goal is for you to get inspired by the look and interpret it into your own personal style. Okay, because some of the outfits here in this book are very daring, they are very extra, but the idea is not to copy them, but you have to incorporate it into your wardrobe by, by interpreting it into your personal style. Okay, they are not made to literally co uh, uh, copy, but to interpret it, incorporate it into your personal style. So for this for this outfit I wore uh, for the cover I wore this dress and here I'm talking about uh, a black very bulky dress very voluminous voluminous dress that was what I was wearing it was a really big dress a girl should be two things classy and glamorous this voluminous black dress call for a glamorous look to achieve this look you have to Make red lipstick your signature look. Uh, red lipstick is my signature look. I wear a lot of red lipstick. Let me sit at least for 10 minutes because this video is going to be long. So if you are there, also pick a glass of, go take a glass of water or a glass of wine or make some coffee or tea and join me <laughs> because it's going to be a lot. Make red lipstick your signature look. This will glam up your whole outfit. You have to choose timeless, sophisticated, and elegant silhouettes. You can never go wrong with classic. Knowing what works for your body type is a very easy way to achieve a glamorous look. Wearing a statement piece of jewelry, bring out the whole, take the outfit to a whole new level of classiness. Wear the right makeup for your outfits. Be good to your body. Treat your body as the most precious thing you ever had. Take good care of yourself. Eat well, rest enough, exercise, above all, stay happy. Show your glamorous side. A smile or a laugh help you to achieve your glamorous look. Don't forget to bring sparkles in your accessories. Let the gl glitter do the talking. Why you do the walking and the posing? Let the ca Love the camera. Learn to strike a pose. Find your flattery angles okay so this is just like telling you how to pose if you want to pose for a picture it's always good you sit up you know you don't have to sit like this to pose for a picture you have to sit up you bring out your chest you know you sit like a queen <laughs> who is sitting on her throne so if you are sitting on a chair you're making a uh, 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 taking a picture getting your picture be taken you have to sit up you know so it's just telling you to love the camera because if you don't like the camera how the camera likes you and make a good picture of you so you have to be friendly you have to like the camera when you see the camera you just look, smile to the camera <laughs> you, okay so that the camera will like you and you love the camera too so it's a, to be a very good relationship between you and the camera so these are the images that was that i used okay you see it's nice So the next topic is resist the fire. I still want to sit for a bit. It is impossible for a woman to be elegant without a touch of femininity. Red is the color of extreme. It is the color of passionate love, seduction, violence, danger, anger, and adventure. Our prehistoric ancestors 
so red as the color of fire and blood, energy and prima life force. It is the symbol of superhuman hero heroism to the Greek. Unique meaning of red in different countries or culture. Red is the color of good luck in Asia. Most Japanese children draw the sun as a big red cycle. The stock markets in East Asia use red to denote a rise in stock exchange, in stock price, sorry. Bright in India and Nepal wear red saris. In Japan, red kimono symbolizes happiness and good luck. That is why women can never get enough of red in their clothes. Timeless styling and classic red color gives you an air of elegance. And this is the this is the outfit for Paris. So you see it, this is the outfit. Yeah. <laughs> so I love red. So now we're gonna talk about fashion is fabulous. What do you think about fashion? What is your idea about fashion? Do you like fashion? Are you anti-fashion? <laughs> or you just know, I just wear a dress so that I'm not cold or I'm not hot. I'm not cold or too hot. That's all. I am not fashionable. I don't like fashion and I don't know anything about fashion. Are you that person? Or you like fashion, you like to be fashionable. Or you just want to see, you are just a, a somebody who likes to wear sweat pants and, and sweat pants and, and uh, the jacket all day. Or you like to dress girly, sexy, feminine, you know, apply makeup. What is your personal style? And what do you think about fashion? Fashion is not something that exists in dresses only. Fashion is in the sky, in the streets. Fashion has to do with ideas, the way we live, what is happening around us. So that is why, because now I'm doing uh, for my YouTube, I'm doing fashion and lifestyle because a lot of people, when they see me with beautiful dresses, high heel shoes and the big hair, they just think, yo, geez. so superficial. And that is it. That is not it. There is more. There is different layers, you know. So it is, it is so much more. It's appreciation of life. Appreciating life. Because if you dress well, you will feel good. And if you feel good, the people around you will also feel good. Because we transfer what we feel inside to the environment around us. If you are not feeling happy, then you will not be kind. You will not be nice to people because you are not happy. All right? So, for this topic, I talked about fashion is fabulous. In fabulous fashion, I want to show the essence of having a timeless sense of style, which means, what does it mean to have a timeless sense of style? Okay, if you buy a dress today, does it go out of fashion tomorrow? You, do you only buy trendy fashion? Or you have pieces in your wardrobe that have stayed 10 years, 20 years, 15 years, and they are still classy. What do you do? How do you gravitate to fashion? Do you jump into the, the brown trend? Immediately it's out, you are there. Immediately it's out of fashion. You get rid of it. How do you? What do you do with your personal style? What do you do with your fashion? So that is what we want to talk about here. That you should not only wear the latest and trendy, hottest trend, but also wear what look good on you. It's not because an outfit is an or a trend is in fashion that it fits your silhouette. The trend might be for a particular type of people, particular type of shape, not your shape. Then you don't have to buy it. If it doesn't look good on you, the price doesn't matter. You don't have to buy it. If it doesn't flatter you, if it doesn't accentuate your cuffs, you don't need it, okay? So it is good when you are developing your wardrobe, when you are styling your wardrobe to have timeless piece. Here in this first wardrobe where I'm shooting this video for you, I have outfits that I have already now for 15 years. Okay, just hold on. Let me show you one of my outfits. It's 15 years and I still wear it. Let me show you. 
show you guys. This is an outfit I have. It's now 15 years. And it's still one of my favorites. I cannot even get enough of it. I still wear this dress. After 15 years, it's still one of my favorites. Okay? So that is the only way you can be able to develop your wardrobe. is by buying outfits that are timeless. You want timeless outfits. Outfits that don't go out of style very fast. That is what you want. Timeless piece. So now I'm back with my sunglasses that are drawing spirits. Let me put this the other books here. The way you dress, your choice of color, body figure, and personal accents you bring are showed in your personality. So what are we talking about here? You can put the same dress in two people. The dress will look completely different in one and the other. It's not only the shape, but also the personality, also the aura, how the person carries themselves. It's very important how it, the, the outfit will translate. Okay? So your personality also determines the type of outfit you can buy or you wear. Not everything is for everybody. That's why there is a lot of choices. So you have to choose the one that is okay for your body type and okay for your personality that you can pull off. Not everybody can wear an outfit that is so colorful and feel happy and feel they're like, oh my God, it's so, it's so bright. Oh no. And they start having, you know, less confident because it's too bright and, and then this will not look good. You have to know your personality, what you can be able to pull off and your shape and your body tone, the color of your skin, the tone of your skin. The tone of your skin is very important. It is all about being feminine, getting in touch with your womanly side and being playful. Fly through the clothes you wear, put an extra touch of red lipstick or whatever lipstick that fits you. Express yourself. Dare to bring out different aspects of your mood personality and lifestyle in the way you dress. Despite what the cartwork and fashion magazine might say, even though your style is timeless, you should know how to pick the best detailed and clothes from the current trend and make it yours. Okay, so because I do this every year, when, it is, when there is a trend and there is in that trend, of that year or of the season, there is a particular outfit that I like. What I will do is to just pan pick the, the few ones that I like and incorporate it into my wardrobe. All right, I do that a lot, but I am not a person who must always go and buy the latest trend, even if it doesn't fit me. It's, it's the color is not good for me. I will not do that. I only buy things that look good on me that fits my body type, that I really like. Why waste the money? If it will not look good on you, just because it's trendy, I want to, like this Bottega bag and Bottega sandals, I don't like it, so I didn't buy it. I didn't, it was so trendy, the girls on Instagram, Facebook, all social media, TikTok, that we are all wearing it. But it's not my cup of tea, I didn't like it. So because I didn't like it, I didn't buy it. I don't have it. If I don't like something, I don't buy it. I have to like it. It's not because everybody is buying it. It's in vogue. Everybody wants that, that I want that too. No, I don't want what everybody wants. I want what I want. <laughs> so the next topic here we see is the attracting force of the opposites. Do opposites attract? Do you agree? If yes, why? In order to be irreplaceable, one must always be different by Coco Chanel. To stripe a surface is to distinguish it, to point it out, to oppose it, associate it with another surface, to classify it, to keep an eye on it and make a bold statement. The color black and white has its magnet, mag, uh, 
magical attractive force in the most elegant way because black atom carries a negative charge while white atom carries a positive charge so black and white graphic plays an intriguing game with the powerful attractive force of the opposite to achieve a maximum effect with a minimal means this means while styling this type of outfits you have to minimize their sexuality black and white are sexy edgy and chic it is also it is used by some company as a code for formal events even if you are a kind of woman who bright color doesn't appeal to black and white is a color to go for in general this monochrome way of dressing gives you a bright modern and contemporary look so black and white stripe do you like stripe do you hear black and white stripe this is it this is the picture i'm even wearing a black and white striped shoes all right you see and this is the black and white and then i did fringe fringe is still involved people are still wearing it i love fringe you have it in bag you have it in shoes you have it in everything fringe i have the fringe skirt here let me show you when i talk about fringe maybe you guys don't know let me show you this is fringe you see this is a fringe it's very nice this is fringe there's a fringe sketch so in that all for this topic i talk about fringe and i'm gonna talk about the fringe with you guys fringe fringe held to toe so you're wearing an outfit that is fringe and we'll have the fringe held to toe fringe okay let's go fringe all the way by experiencing the fringe style the native american tribe of the plain has created since long garments with the fringe initially these garments were meant to repair rain water from the wearer fringe were meant to add a bit of length to the daring style american fringe was an outgrowth of the hippie movement of the late 1960. In 1960, there was the movement, <laughs> the hippie, they started, they started wearing fringe. But in 19, okay, I didn't say it here, in 1920, that was the origin of fringe, you know? But they remodernized it, and in 1960, this hippie, we are wearing fringe, we are using it, and now we have, we now still wear fringe. We have some shoes that are fringe on, has fringe on them and bags and, and whatever. Wearing fringe became a way of showing sympathy for the Native American cause. It was inspired by the flappers of the 1920 and re revisited by the glam rock of the 1980s. Fringe is one of the biggest ongoing trends on all the runaway. Fringe is everywhere right now on accessories like bags, shoes, jacket, jewelry, skirt, and so forth. If you are new to fringe style, you can start by going for some accessories with fringe on them. This will add a touch of extra pop to your look. Take a fringe style for a spin by wearing a fringe dress and matching it uh, by wearing a fringe dress and watch it still the occasion. A fringe dress is ideal for the evening and also a great party or anytime dancing is involved. Fringe dress, scream, edgy, and also a great party dress. When dancing is involved, that's what I said. Fringe dress, scream, edgy, and fun. While you are on the dancing floor. Style this fabulous outfit with killer heels. So let's, let me just show you guys so you can imagine. You're wearing a skirt that has fringe on it and you are dancing, you see? You see how it moves when you dance? They all shake. <laughs> so that is the movement. It shakes when you dance. So it's very nice to wear fringe when you're going to a party and you're going to shake. You're going to dance and dance. You're going to sweat. So if you're going to party and you're going to be, you're going to sweat, you're going to dance, fringe outfit is recommended. <laughs> so this is the fringe dress that I wore. I wore it to a party 
and I was dancing in that party. I'm like, oh, everybody was just looking because it was so spectacular. When I wore the fringe dress and I had to dance, it was, it was beautiful. Okay. So I want to pick another topic here. Let's just I already talked about this. Touched by a smile. I want to talk about smiling. All right. And you will say, Rita, what does smiling has to do with fashion? Oh my God. Oh dear. Fashion has a lot. Smiling has a lot to do with fashion. All right. When you don't smile and you're wearing not an outfit, that outfit don't look good. You have to smile. Touch by a smile. Too often, we underestimate the power of a touch of a smile. A kind word, a listening ear, an, hon an honest compliment, or the smallest act of caring. All of which has the potential to turn a life around. By Leo Buchig Buchig oh, it's difficult to pronounce. Da Vinci Mona Lisa became one of the most famous painting of all time because of her unique smile. What happened to your brain when you smile? The, the signal travel when you try a signal travels when you smile, the signal travels from your cortex of your brain to the brain stem. From there, the muscles carry the signal further towards the smiling, uh, further towards the smiling muscles in your face. Smiling regulates our brain reward mechanism in a way that even chocolate or well-rewarded pleasure inducer cannot match. Okay? What smiling does to your head? Smiling reduces the stress that your body and mind feels. Also similar to getting a good sleep. So when you smile, it's also similar for having a, a, a good sleep. So smiling is very necessary. According to written studies, smiling helps to generate more positive emotion within you. Smiling leads to decrease in stress-induced hormone that negatively affects your physical and mental health. As well as the best dress combination will drastically improve by a smile, the most beautiful outfit will look bad with a frowning face. Don't forget, a smile is always the best fashion statement. I hope this will put a smile on your face. <laughs> so smiling is very necessary. My gorgeous fashionistas, you have to smile. It makes you to look youthful. It reduces your stress. And this is the outfit that I use. That is it. This is the outfit here. I even wanted to wear the outfit yesterday, but it was not ironed. And I'm like, okay, it's not ironed. I'm gonna wear it in the week. Where is it now? It went hiding. I wanted to show it to you guys, the outfit. Oh my god, I can't find it. Yeah, it's here. My outfit that I wore. You see it's rumpled, I have to iron it. It gets rumpled very fast. So whenever you want to wear it, you have to always re-iron it. Okay? That is smile. Are you touched by a smile? Or you are touched by a frown. <laughs> Which one? Which one for today? Touched by a smile or touched by a frown? Where do you take it to? I love to be touched by a smile. Do you like to be touched by a smile? <laughs> I love it a lot. I want to be touched by a smile. So, smile. Who is there? Drop a commentary. Tell me, do you like to smile or you like to frown? Frowning is not good. It's not good for nobody. It's very unnecessary to frown. Because the best outfits will drastically become ugly if you are frowning. Okay? So now, let's fire on. Personal style. <laughs> we will talk about that personal style. What is your personal style? What do you like? 
because everybody's style is different. I like to wear dresses, high heel shoes, sometimes sport shoes. When I'm home, I wear some sneakers. When I have to run around, do errands, I wear sneakers. Like today, I'm wearing sneakers. But when I'm going for dinner, I will wear high heel shoes. Or when I'm just home and there is not too much to do, I will be wearing heels. But when there is a lot involved in a day for me, I go with my sport shoes. Okay? Personal style is about getting to know yourself. Being connected with the very essence of who you are and be confident about it. Who exactly are you? And what does it have to do with fashion? Imagine a world where we all have to wear the same clothes. A place where everyone has the same style. That wouldn't be exactly a colorful and stimulating environment, would it? No, it would not be. Dare to be yourself and wear the clothes that expresses the unique and fabulous person you are. How to find the confidence in yourself and in your style. Some people will say, hmm, my style. If I show people my style, they will not like me. They will not accept it. <laughs> so I better just go with the flow. Pretend I don't have my own personal style. So, how to find the confidence in yourself and in your style? Understand your body. First thing is to know what kind of body you have and what works for you. If you know your body shape and your strength and weakness, you can buy the right clothes to either accentuate or camouflage them. Understand your personality and color. Color can also have a huge effect on your style and how you feel. Make sure that every item you buy fits you. Make sure that every make sure your style make your style extra special with the right accessories. Invest in a good pair of accessories that fit your style. Once you have covered the basics of your style, Look for some wonderful statements piece that are truly unique for you. Try to be creative. Mix both high and end and low end brand together to create a unique look. A good style reflects your attitude and your personality. Okay, so you see what we have to do. We have to cover the basics first before you start doing extra. Because I have this, just a little story time. Because a lot of people, they see my picture on Facebook, they see, and sometimes when they invite me for a party and I come to a party and I'm wearing very extreme high heel shoes and well dressed, they're like, oh, this is too high. Why don't you have like eight centimeter? I'm like, darling, if I don't have eight centimeter shoes, I will be crazy to go and buy 60. Okay. I have five. I have six. I have seven. I have 10, I have 12, and I have 16, okay? I have to cover the basics first before I go to the extreme high heel. You don't start from top, you start from bottom. So that is it. That was what a lot of people were confused. When they see me, they talk, oh, she only have extreme high heel shoes. She doesn't have classic shoes. Excuse me, I have it all. I have both classic shoes and I have both extreme heels. I have big outfit and I have simple dresses. All right. So you have to cover the basics before you start going for the extra. Like me, I know that red suits me very well. Red is my favorite color. So I know that. And when I want to buy an outfit and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm going for a party or I'm going for somewhere special and I really want to be off, be, be my best. I will say, okay, okay, let me just go for a red outfit. Why? Because I know that suits me. That's my go-to color. So you have to know what fits you best. Your go-to color, your go-to style of outfits. Right? I know that black is not the most flattering on my skin tone. Neither is brown. So I have less black and brown in my wardrobe. And when I wear black, I try to, you know, spice it up, 
We are it with a golden shoe. We are it with a silver shoe. We are it with a multicolored shoe. You know, I try to give it an extra boost. Why? Because I know it doesn't really suit my skin well. It's not the best for me. It's okay, but it's not the best. So when I wear black, I try to wear other colors to stimulate it, to make it pop. So this is what you have to learn. You have to know what is flattering on you, what look best on you. You have to try to understand it. There is no need to go to the shop and pack everything home. Not everything is for you. Maybe they are for other people. You had, you were supposed to leave it for somebody else to buy, not you. And make sure the outfits you buy fits you. Some people, when they buy an outfit, it doesn't fit. Oh, it doesn't matter. No, it matters. If it doesn't fit you, then you have to take that outfit to the alteration lady or the alteration guy to alter it to, for you, to fit you. It has to fit you. Yeah, let's talk about fit. Now I want to talk about something. Here now. Why we're talking about outfit that fits? Not only fitting you, it has to also be appropriate for your age. I see now on Instagram, you see these guys, they're wearing leggings. And they're wearing a very tiny top. Their eyes are all out. It's like you can see the silhouette, you can see everything is out. I'm like, hello, what are you doing? What is that? If you wear a leggings that is very tight, you wear a t-shirt or a top on top of it, that covers your body. All right? That is that is the rule. Don't try to change it and tucking your 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 leg your top into your leggings. And your ass is there, and then you wear a high heel shoe. What is that? That's bullshit. There. Some things has to be kept. For the imagination you don't have to show everything what is that that's just bullshit that's not okay so when you are styling your outfit or when you are buying your outfit keep your age also in consideration there are certain things that are made for children and then you don't buy that at a certain age, you don't wear a dress that is too short because you have wrinkles, all right? Nobody wants to see that. It's not beautiful. So that is this. That is that, my, my fashionistas and my gorgeous people. <laughs> Try to know what fits you. And when you are going for shopping, think about what you want to spend your money on and make sure it fits you and it look good on you. There is no need to show, to wear a tiny, to wear, I'm really against that leggings and tucking your top, your shirt, into it. For me, that is absolute, absolute, that's rubbish. You don't have to do that. So let's take another topic. <laughs> I'm staying warm. Okay, let's do passion. Yeah, what is your passion? My passion is fashion. Fashion is my passion. So, when fashion is a passion, what happens? <laughs> and what is your passion? What is your passion? What do you like to do? What are you passionate about? Drop the comments below. I want to know what you are passionate about. What you love. I want to know that. Passion is the bread we take, the water we drink to sustain ourselves. Without air and water, we perish. Without passion and artists, we fade away. People get excited and passionate about an idea, but they quickly lose stream and so lose their drive to see this idea true. Keeping up the passion requires a continuous effort in order to become a master in your craft. In order to become a master in what you are passionate about, you have to keep doing it. Like now, take YouTube. <laughs> the first time I had to stand in front of the camera, it was so awkward. I was like, oh my God, this is so difficult. It's more difficult than I thought. 
I was uncomfortable. But now I have done more than 60 video. I start feeling comfortable in front of the camera. Okay? So if you start doing something, I love it. I'm passionate about it. But this camera of a thing, just standing and talking to a camera, I'm like, oh my God, this is a little bit weird. But now, after doing so much video, I feel so comfortable to pick the camera and start talking in front of it. It's no longer like, oh my God, what is this? I feel happy to talk in front of the camera. And when it's even live, I feel more happy because I know that you are watching me from the other side and you can chat. So it's even more interesting for me. Three ways to cultivate your passion. We start by being curious. We are drawn towards the things that we are curious about. Once we have picked up something that we acquired knowledge about that subject, which require more curiosity, curiosity leads to, to passion. You have a passion because you have a passion for this. You want to know more about this thing. And since you want to know more about this particular thing that you are passionate about, you have to acquire knowledge about it. I know more about outfits, styling, you know, why? Because I'm passionate about it. I go and read about fashion, about things, the history, this and that, and bag and shoe. I'm always, you know, busy looking out, trying to acquire knowledge about these things. And while you acquire knowledge about these things, you become more, you become better in it. You know more about it. You become more diverse you know a lot about it and that is what you need to cultivate your passion if you have passion about something don't just sit down and expect the thing to just become big the next day no 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 no. you have to acquire the knowledge that is required for that particular thing that you are passionate about engaging in our interest regularly and repeat and uh, repeatedly make it more interesting the more interesting it becomes the more it involves into a passion. Because you are doing what you are passionate about every day, continuously, every time, or not, might not be every day, frequently and repeatedly, you will have more knowledge about that thing. And this will make you feel better. And this thing will involve into your passion. If you have a passion, you have to develop it. Like some people, they are passionate about singing, but they don't exercise, they don't sing. So you, you're not going to become the next big thing, the next big musician. If you know how to sing, you love how to sing, but you don't sing, you don't exercise. You need to exercise your passion. Whatever it is, exercise is the key. And what is exercising is doing that thing repeatedly. If YouTube now is your passion, then you have to keep making videos and making videos and making videos and making videos and then you get used to it. <laughs> that is just the only way. Then your words will keep flowing. You keep becoming better in it because it's exercising, doing it repeatedly. So whatever your passion is, go for it. Exercise it. Do it. Even if in the beginning you are not good in it, it will become better. Rome was not built in a day and it is true. <laughs> so you have to learn it. Some people are passionate about poetry or painting, but it is very easy for those who are not passionate to escape. When we talk about fashion, it's not the case. Whether you are passionate about fashion or not, you must participate because you have to wear clothes. Believe it or not, whatever you wear, we express your emotion and personality. Fashion gives you freedom. It allows you to be whoever you want to be. The people who are intoxicated by fashion will find an everlasting excitement in the ability of change renewal and self-invention of fashion. All right, so now you know if fashion is your passion, go for it. Experiment with your outfit. Dare to wear a different outfit. Dare to do something different. And keep doing it. Then you get better in it. Fashion has always been my passion. And I have always, you know, 
read magazine, look at magazine. Even when I was a little girl, I would buy a magazine. I would look at it. I would read it. I'm like, oh my God, when I grow up, I want to be like this girl. I want to be like this model. And when I grow up now, <laughs> I became a model. Okay, so if fashion is your passion, you have to exercise it. Whatever your fashion, your passion is, you have to exercise it. If cooking is your passion, you have to continuously cooking and repeating it. Cook that, whatever, the soup, the yam, the whatever. Whatever you like to cook, keep cooking it, keep preparing it. Then it will become, then you will be very good in it. A chef cook was, the, was not born in a day, oh. A chef cook. To be cooking, cooking, cooking before he became a, a, a chef. If your passion is a, for sewing, you have to keep sewing. You have to keep doing it because it's only when you keep doing it that you become a master in that craft. Exercising. Keep doing it. Don't give up on your dream. Don't give up on your aspiration. Then you will be good in it. Because some people might even discourage you and tell you, ah, no. Oh my God, it's not good. You don't know how to do it. But when you keep doing it, these people who said in the beginning that you will not be able to do it, they will be the one to say, oh my God, wow. Oh, I'm sorry that I didn't see it. I could not really see that you were so talented. Oh my God, you're really talented. So don't let anybody break your talents. Don't let anybody stop you from reaching your destiny. Keep focus. And pursue and go for your passion. What are your passion? When I say what are your passion, it's like exercising, as I said before, exercising your passion. Doing what you are passionate about. When you do what you are passionate about, the sky is the limit. So go for it. If fashion is your passion, go for it. Sewing is your passion, go for it. Cooking is your passion, go for it. Whatever your passion is, don't hesitate to go for it because that is the only way you will become successful in it. Okay, this was a very long video. We did a lot. <laughs> you guys stayed with me for, we are now 62 minutes, for 62 minutes. Oh my God, I'm so happy that you guys stayed with me. It's amazing. So today, what do you guys have to say about my outfits? Let's talk about outfit of the day. What do you guys say about it? What is your take? It's a beautiful lace dress. I love it. It's, I didn't wear it last year. It's more than a year now that I wore it. But it still fits. It has a little rule. Very colorful lace dress. And I'm wearing hats and my coiling hair my short coiling hair is my favorite hair i love it i love my hair to be short and coily not too much i don't like hairs that touch my shoulders <laughs> and i'm wearing these sunglasses transparent sunglasses beautiful and today i'm home so for these outfits i'm home i just wore sneakers sneakers you guys want to see the sneakers and the cross is also very gorgeous Makeup is simple as usual. Just had my lipstick red and the pink and the nails is pink because tomorrow I'm wearing a pink outfit. So I decided to just start. I did the nails yesterday. So it's pink. And maybe I'll show you guys the shoes. I don't know. Take the camera down a little bit. Guys have seen it. It's difficult. It's gonna be difficult to show you guys. So let's leave. Let's leave the shoes for some other days. So my beautiful and gorgeous people, thank you for staying with me on this video. It was very interesting, I think so. Talking about fashion with you guys, reading my book, talking about how I got my ideas for my book. I'm really very happy. So my gorgeous people, I'm going to love you guys now and leave you guys and see you guys in my other video. Go and subscribe and hit the notification bell so that whenever there is a video up, you will be notified and you will watch it. Love you all. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.